Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to introduce you to a man who has worked all over the world. He's widely acclaimed as one of the UK's top comedy performers and magicians. We'd like to, but unfortunately it was not available at this price. <laughs> Instead, please welcome a man who was unseen by millions, Mark Warner! Can I get a nose bleed? Look at these people with the chains on. Don't be very flushed with yourself. How are you? It is. Where's the mayor? I can't see the light. Under there. Hello, Mr. Mayor. How are you? Did you write that speech yourself? <laughs> you did. There we go. What's your name? Cameron. <laughs> Cameron. Cameron. Do you write your own jokes? <laughs> Come over here, Cameron. You're going to be a stuck day one. Come over here, fair enough. I don't blame you. Shy. Conservative. All right, give that a bit of a blow, Julian. Nice and hard. That's terrific. Surprise to work. I've got that down the toilet. <laughs> so, by a round of applause, who has seen me before? Who has not seen me before? And who could care less when they see me again? Composed by me, that's no lie, it's a story of two girls and one guy. Now, two of the three, a husband and wife, a king and a queen for most of their life. Her name is Edith, his name is Stan. Edith is queen, Stan her man. Now, Stan, you can smile, but Edith could not. For a child they wanted, that could not be got. Old Stan was quite virile, and quite potent, well made. It was Edith who was star, for she was spade. He for a son to carry his name. As soon as Edith, he started to blame. The fighting, the yelling, she could take it no more. She calls down a bum in his mistress, a horrible person. <laughs> well, she knew about Kate. She was a lovely young lass. She had the face of a queen and a nice cute ankle. You see, he lusted for Kate, but he still loved his queen. So a threesome they became with a king in between. The Kingston Trio they became known, but two queens and one king were rocking the throne. You see, lust and greed don't mix well with fate. And soon it was Edith who lusted for Kate. <laughs> Two queens in love soon said Stan away. Uh -huh. Stan would return, he wanted to play. <laughs> they sent him away quick outside the walls, and if he returned, they'd cut off his hand. <laughs> well, Stan was persistent, he wanted to stay, and one day he returned while Kate was away. A fight broke out, he didn't shout and she hissed. Not to mention the king, he was upset. <laughs> well, Kate did return, much to his delight, and the king, nowhere in sight. Sort of he left, two queens rather happy, mm, quite gay. And the king, well, he's not had his way. So what's the moral of the story that we learn of Stan, Kate, Edith, and the tables they turn? Well, I've told it to Stan, and now I'm going to tell it to you. It can't be Kate and Edith, too. Thank you. <laughs> and I heard, I heard the, the, the lady say to, the, to, to her husband, she said, she said, do you remember, do you remember the first time we made love? And he said, to be honest, dear, I don't remember the last time. <laughs> it says here that, that Prime Minister Brown leaves tomorrow for a tour of friendly countries. He's due back the day after. <laughs> you won't believe this. There's a policeman in the road like this, right? I thought, he won't be strong enough. <laughs> so I thought, I better stop. So I did stop and I pulled over into the, into the harsh shoulder. And he came over and he, he bent down and he put his head through the window. I thought, I should have opened it. He said, <laughs> They asked the most ridiculous questions. He said, oh, I'm the driver of this vehicle. I said, well, it's an automatic, but I've got to be here. <laughs> he said, can you identify yourself? So I looked in the mirror. I went, yeah, that's me. <laughs> he said, where were you between two and four? I said, nursery school. <laughs> he said, when's your birthday? I said, it does get better. Give it another five minutes. <laughs> He said, when's your birthday? I said, the 6th of September. He said, what year? I said, well, every year. <laughs> he said, did you know you were doing 100 miles an hour? I said, I can't have done. I've only been out 20 minutes. He said, what would have happened if Mr. Fogg had come down? I said, I'd have taken Mr. Fogg off Mr. Accelerator and put it on Mr. Brake. <laughs> he said, I said, what would have happened if Mr. or Fogg had come down? <laughs> About 20 minutes out of Heathrow, 30,000 feet over the tunnel, it comes apart. He's gone Christmas Day, Christmas Day, Boxing Day, Shrove Tuesday, Ash Wednesday, Good Friday. I thought, I know what he's looking for, May Day. <laughs> and as a result, the traffic one was lying in a heap in the curb. And we thought he must have been run over several times, I looked at it. 
So we called the ambulance, and they were there within, within the hour. And they rushed up, and they got out the back of the ambulance, and they strolled over, and they said, we'd better get me the defibs, Charlie. So he's got the defibs, and he's gone, boom, like that. Nothing at all. He said, turn it up a little bit, Charlie. <laughs> nothing at all. He said, all power, Charlie. He's, <laughs> nothing. He said, pass my clipboard, Charlie. Right, time of death. Just then, the traffic warden, the only one I went, I'm all right. He said, it's too late, mate. I started writing. <laughs> Hey, I've got the obituaries there, and I to prove it, I've got... You know what the telegraph looks like, don't you? You do? It's this paper here. Look at that. There you go. Just listen to me there, gents. This is your first time in an audience, or have you been before? You've never been here before, and you've just lived down the road. Well, thanks for supporting the local economy. Sir, now. It's very kind of you. You're very kind OK, um... <laughs> No, these are rubbish. Um, <laughs> these didn't catch on at all, Jan. <laughs> Absolutely rubbish, these were. Absolutely rubbish. That's the aerial, Jan. You've <laughs> <laughs> yeah. still got the aerial in your ear, Jan. It's like you tell it. That's it, Jan. Well done. All right. Oh, no. <laughs> what I'd like to do now, Jan, is to rummage around inside the beans and see if you can find anything. Jan, I'll take the plate away, you hold that. You've still got a few beans on there, have you? Yeah, it's a bit messy, isn't it? Has that got your signature on, Jan? Okay, turn it around and show me you've got a thunderous round of applause from the audience on there. Thank you very much for being Whoa! Nobody move. <laughs> Nobody move a muscle. Sir, I'm so sorry. Would you mind? Would you stand up? Just come here to step. I'm so sorry. Is this forward a bit forward? Just hold that forward, please. I am so sorry about that. You. you are such a naughty best, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sir. That's good luck for the wrong one. Sorry. Thank you. I'm back again. Yes, look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Look at this, Frederick Would you please put your hands together for, for Frederick Flynn? Thank you. 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 Thank you.